Hey everybody, Escape211 here, and a lot of you have asked me to do some kind of reaction to the devlog video, my thoughts on it. So I'm just gonna go through the video and then stop it at certain points and talk about it, all right? Figure that's the easiest way to do it. So uh, I know I'm behind, and probably a lot of you have talked about it, so maybe this doesn't concern you at all, but uh, I know some people have asked about it, so I thought I would make a video on it. Um, so we're just gonna go right through it. Here we go, all right? If it'll play. All right, there we go. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to Freya. our new devlog. This is the sixth video in this series, and we have a ton of awesome content to show off today. In case you're joining us for the first time, I'm Freya from the Mac Arena community team. Freya is so fun. In this like video, Freya. I'll talk about new features <laughs> currently in development. Keep in mind that some of them might change, get delayed, or even cancelled. Let's quit. All right, before we do the recap, notice she says change, get delayed or canceled, all right? Always gotta remember that devlog is always stuff that's in development and can vastly change as we might've known in the past. So always keep that in mind when you watch these. All right, so we're doing the recap first. Quickly recap a couple of features from the previous devlog before we begin. The legendary pilot codenamed Oksana has now been released. Her final name is Stefania, and she is currently joined one of the most successful pilot releases we've had in Macarena so far. Both our artists and the dev team had a blast working on her, and they are very happy with how Stefania turned out. She joins our other recently released pilot, who has caught named Lotus. Her name is Mina, Mina. and she is a beast with a close range weapons. Our new Mac, Orion, went live as well. The launch was smooth enough, but we are seeing some balance issues that need fixing. Of course, we'll do so carefully and without harming your gaming experience. We'll keep you posted. Okay, so uh, good recap. Okay, obviously the legendary pilots, they've been brought out um, and the way they've been doing it, I actually think is pretty good when you compare it to how the mechs and weapons have been released lately, where they're not on the progress path, they're not really available for free to play. Um, the system that they have that they've been doing for the pilots has been good for whales to buy it early, those who are um, pocket change or dolphins to be able to buy it, and they've already been putting a lot of them out. Like uh, Stefania is already one that you can get. Uh, Asami we can already get, Mina will probably come along soon, and then Archangel. They've, they've already put them in the store available for us to get. I don't know why they're not doing the same already with the mechs and the weapons. They could probably just put it right in your inventory in the same way, but whatever. I'm, I'm not sure why they're doing it differently for pilots, uh, but it's a good step, and I hope they just continue that along. I know that's not covered in this dev log, but I hope the idea of changing um, the progress path and all that comes along soon. Otherwise, though, good stuff to recap on. Interesting to see, though, that Orion uh, is going to get a change. I'm assuming that means a nerf. Orion, if you look at him based on his stats, based on his ability and all that kind of stuff, being 24 energy, he's pretty insane. Like, he's kind of overpowered, in my opinion. I actually don't see a ton of him on the field when you compare it to, like, Surge or Stalker, which are some of the high ones. It actually, spoiler alert, I plan to do a top five mech soon to talk about a lot of these different mechs, but Orion, I would say, is, is somewhere in the mix with that. But if he does get changed and nerf depending on how you know severe that is it might knock him down a few packs so we'll see how that goes but um you know what they said sounds pretty spot on so far for the recap let's move on here but that's enough of the old stuff let's set our sights on the future yeah. first up an exciting announcement we have another epic scout mech in development nice redeemer. unlike its predecessors redeemer won't have any abilities that propel it forward and let it skim across the battlefield in seconds Yep. Instead, it has Backtrack, nice which lets it roll back to whatever spot it occupied several seconds ago. You'll have a chance to try it out soon enough. We're hoping to release Redeemer sometime around the day of the dead event we have planned later this fall. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry, I paused in a weird spot for her. Uh, so, Redeemer, real quick, I'll say, looks like they said it's a scout. They showed it pictured with lighter weapons. It seems like it's going to be a light mech, max 16 energy, maybe a legendary, maybe an epic. We don't have many epics and we don't have a legendary light mech yet. So it could fit that bill if they wanted to necessarily have legendary category in each spot. 
Um, so that would be cool to see. Uh, his ability seems really cool. It actually reminds me of early, like, you know, when you're using kill shot early game with jabs, you do a lot of hit and run stuff. This would be good for that. I could actually see this doing really well with like a single railgun or, um, EM 16, where you come in, take a shot and then do the, the back draft ability to back out or like with missile racks or something like that. That's going to allow you to do a ton of DPS and then pull yourself back easily. That's the design, the hit and run design, I think actually could work really well for this mech and be really strong, but we'll see how it goes. Overall, I, I think the idea sounds solid uh, as well as viable enough, even if it's a light mech, but we'll see how it goes once we get there. And she said, uh, day of the dead event. All right. So keep that in mind. And we're going to talk about like when all this stuff could conceivably come out when we get through all this. All right, let's move on. Next, we have a feature you've been all waiting for. Clans. Yes. yes clans. We know ah. many of you really wanted them added to the game as app, and yes. we are doing our best to deliver. That's why we decided to break our plans into smaller releases and speed up the development. So the things I'll talk about now are just the first iteration of clans. There will be more in the future. Nice. Once okay. the feature goes live, players will be able to create a clan of their own or join an existing one. They'll get access to a clan chat and two clan ladder boards. One of these will showcase the clans with the highest power ratings, and the other will reveal which clans have dealt the most damage this week. Okay. You also get an option to invite your clanmates to join you in battle. Like I said earlier, that's just a small number of things we have in store for clans. We'll release more gradually. Okay, so this is a big one, all right? Probably the biggest thing, and I love that it's a featured item instead of just being like a quick little mention, all right? Um, it seems way overdue, of course, that clans are actually coming to the game and seem to be happening soon. I have no idea when. They just keep saying that it's soon, all right? Usually with devlogs, though, they put out stuff, you know, within the next couple of months after it. So I feel like there's going to be a quick window to when we're going to see clans. I feel like it's probably maybe sometime this month, maybe next month, and maybe I'm being optimistic, but it does seem like it's close around the corner. However, I'll say that with a caveat that in the beginning, they did say that some of these things that are in development can change or whatever or even get scrapped which I'd hate to see because this is something everyone has wanted to see for so long all right I actually did a video with Freya and Red Torch um, if you look at my backlog in May of 2021 that was 18 months ago where Freya or Freya base quickly dropped the basic idea of clans and said it's something that you know they know people want they're in the early stages of development that was 18 months ago. I mean, that's a long development cycle for this to happen. Now, I know they've had the war and everything to deal with, but man, that's crazy long to me. Um, but still, I'm still pumped to see that it's actually happening. I never thought I'd see the day, quite honestly. So this is super good. Um, I just hope that it delivers on what we want. It sounds like this is just covering the core, like the basic features, but that's enough to get us started with the idea clans. And then they can certainly build upon that with certain events and other tournaments and various kind of stuff. But that's really good. I love to see that. So um, good, great stuff so far. All right, well, let's move on to the next new item here. Moving on, we've already mentioned a new Mac, but we also have a new pilot to go with it, and his name is Baron. He's a descendant of the French aristocracy, which made it all the more shocking when he was unmasked as the one of the boldest, most infamous cat burglars. He was arrested and spent a decade in prison. After his release, he turned his talents to piloting Max and made his way to the big leagues in record nice time. Part. I like it. He's reformed now, or so he claims. He will be a legendary pilot specializing in sniper weapons, and he's expected to pay us a visit in October with our Day of the Dead event, unless some totally legitimate business delays him. <laughs> okay, so new pilot coming, and it's a legendary sniper pilot. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, as I've heard the discussions that said, why do we need another legendary pilot? We just got Archangel. Seems really silly, right? Well, not exactly in my opinion, all right? Think about the different legendary or the big sniper weapons that we have available to us. Uh, uh, long Arm 12 is pretty viable end game on something like Stalker or Orion, okay? Uh, EM Rifle 10s are great. EM Rifle 16s are amazing, top end. Uh, and Railgun 16, right? We have so many options for this. And if you're a sniper, having a couple of these would be really good so you don't have to rely entirely on Maverick. Now, what seems a little weird to me, and I'll say this, is we just had the new limited edition pilot come out that's a mixed build and one that has four slots 
epic stats, but a perk, all right? So this is actually a nice um, pilot that sits somewhere between a legendary and epic. What's weird to me is to release more legendaries without necessarily thinking about that limited edition slot. Now, maybe they're not doing that too often. Maybe they're just doing it like for very specialty items. So it's not going to become something they come out with a limited edition for like every single category. Maybe that's the case and it makes sense then to have a couple of legendaries. But my point in saying this is that if you have two legendary pilots in a certain category, there's no reason really to use that limited edition pilot because its stats are just not as good. Unless the perk is amazing, there's not really a good reason to take it over top of two legendaries in its category. Even an off legendary is generally like stat wise, close to or maybe better than that uh, limited edition pilot. And when it's one that specializes in the innate ability that you want, then it's like game over. There's no reason to, to get anything other than that. So it does seem a little strange, but without seeing how this legendary pilot will come out or seeing what other limited edition pilots they wanna do, uh, it's hard for me to say if this is totally unwarranted. But even in the current meta, without looking at limited edition pilots, the idea of having multiple legendary pilots in one category can make sense. Another one you could look at is Guided. There's a lot in there. You wanna have multiple disc launcher runs, sure. And you may wanna do, uh, you know, Jav 8s or something like that. There's, there's good reason to have more than one legendary pilot in the category. So it's not the craziest idea. It just depends on how they implement it. We'll see about that soon. All right, because again, she's talking about uh, him coming in October. So that's something to think about. Um, all right, but let's move on here. On top of all that, we have a new weapon to show off. Nice. It's a type of minigun that's going to form part of brand new weapon time that will include heavy assault weapons. Good. The current plan mm -hmm. is for it to fire rapidly and put out a lot of damage. The trade-off will be that it takes a while to reload, just like the real thing. As far as release dates go, we're hoping to roll it out later this fall. Keep an eye on our social media in future devlogs to learn more. Okay. So, uh, not much to say about this new weapon because it looks like it's an earlier development. It sounds like they're trying to still release it within the fall though. So that's still, you know, within like a month or so time before we actually get into the winter area. So, uh, it still looks pretty close on the rise, but again, they always talk about how the development cycle can push or change. So that may come later in the year or possibly even next year is my guess, given the other things that they're going to put out. But Really cool to see another assault weapon that's considered like heavy class. So we'll probably get this in like 12 and 16 and other kind of stuff uh, at top end, which is really nice. I do, of course, love carbines, but they are a weapon that in a lot of cases, let's face it, gets outclassed by other end game weapons. So having another assault weapon that may actually take a good slot there at 12 or 16 would be really nice. I don't know if it's going to be like a mix between the damage kind of output that a carbine does and then the ammo capacity of like an auto cannon, or if it's it's just going to spit out a lot of ammo really quick for high-end DPS. Either way, it sounds really interesting, uh, but we'll have to see how it works in practice once we get to that point. But glad that they're adding some more to Assault. I think it's a little overdue. Uh, so yeah, good stuff. Let's move on. Last but not least seen is the new map we are currently working nice. on. Nice, yes. It's set in a former industrial complex. When it was decommissioned, the leak snapped it up and converted it into an arena. Mm -hmm. This was a fun map to work on, and our team looks forward to seeing how you guys like it. So be sure to leave your feedback once you had a chance to try it. That's all, right. Sorry, all the just... news I have to share for now. Okay, that's all the news we have. All right, so I'm going to actually leave the link below um, for you to see some other stuff if there's other things you want to see at the end, the tail end when she brings this together. Um, and they do have outtakes, which are fun. I love Freya. She's really, Freya, she's really fun. I keep saying Freya, sorry. Freya, she's really fun. Um, and uh, I think you should check those out. They're, they're a good time. I enjoy the bloopers. Um, but yeah. Maps, again, something that's overdue, in my opinion, um, to add into this, and definitely uh, a great category to add in. Um, I do hope, it did look like some of it was CPC, which is great. I do hope there's some other tournament ones, too. I know people get really bored of the tournament ones, especially because they're so grindy. So I hope this is a, a map where they can, you know, just change the layouts multiple times like they do with all their other tournament maps and then skin it you know, with this type of uh, uh, texture mapping. So I do think that that's very possible, but it just depends on how they want to uh, release that kind of stuff. But yeah, new maps is definitely an overdue item. Uh, I actually, I just realized I will continue this because she does a little Q&A here at the end. So we'll let that go too.
But go. there are a few questions you guys sent to us that I'll answer before we wrap up. The first one is from CK, and I can say for sure that CPC tournaments are on our to-do list. Nice. We expect them to drop sometime next year. When we have more info to share, we'll definitely do that in our future devlogs. While we can't promise the Dome Shield will have negative effects, you will probably be happy to know that we are planning to rework Aegis Balance a bit in response to players' feedback. We have good news for you, Divya. If all goes to plan, we'll add the free-for-all game mode closer to the end of the year. Nice. And that's it for today's vlog. Thank you. All right, so now we really get the end of it. So those three things were also really good to see a CPC tournament. I love CPC is my favorite game mode. Uh, I, I do understand the draw of, you know, team deathmatch and that kind of stuff. It's just something that, you know, when there's no other outside objective where it's positional map advantage, I feel like it loses some strategy element. And that's what I like more than just like straight like Twitch skill and killing people. Um, so I really like CPC. It's my favorite mode in this game. Um, so glad to see that they're going to do some more competitive stuff related to that. Also good to see that they may be balancing Aegis um, just because I think, you know, it's it's a harder mech to use, not as good uh, by many people's standards. So like that idea of what the mech brings to the table is a little bit under as well as like earlier they said Orion's over. So I hope they do some subtle changes to each to bring those both in balance. That would be great. Uh, and then um, what was the last item? She did something else. Uh, I forgot what it was. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Oh, yeah, yeah, the free-for-all mode. Okay, so free-for-all mode is one that they've talked about and is coming, of course, which is great. Um, so I'm glad that they addressed that again. But again, it sounds like it's going to be close to the end of the year, similar to the minigun. So I would think that that's going to be like late November, December, and maybe even early into next year, possibly for both those things. There's just a lot that they're trying to bring here. But overall, I got to say, guys, there's a lot of good stuff about this one. I do think uh, plenty of it's overdue, but the fact that we're getting it is great. Like I said, they have had the war and different difficulties that I know set them back. So it's great to see these kind of things coming out in development again. I just hope they come sooner rather than later. And with all of that, many people are asking, when is all of this stuff supposed to happen? Now, uh, the Day of the Dead event happens I believe the 1st of November or like right in early November. But she did talk about some things coming late in October. So my guess, my gut, and I don't know this for sure, is that they're going to do a two-week event because Halloween is the end of this month in October, that it's going to be a two-week event for the last week of October, first week of November, where they cover all this stuff. They've done a lot of two-week events before where they have a lot of different things going on and ways to get all these skins and stuff, which makes sense. It's going to be, you know, Halloween-based skins or Day of the Dead-based skins. Uh, and then these new items that they have the new mech and, and all that kind of stuff and the new pilot. So I can see a lot of that happening for this event. And then we'll see the minigun, uh, some of those maps and maybe uh, free for all and that kind of stuff a little bit later. But that's just my overall guess on it. But it does seem like a lot of this is right around the corner. I hope that also means clans. Um, and as I'm able to figure out more stuff, I definitely will keep you all aware and do like test server footage if I get access to it, of course, to see how a lot of this functions. But yeah, that's the overall thing. I think a lot of this stuff is good, even though it's overdue. Uh, so I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. Do you think this has been a good dev vlog? What are you excited about? What are you hoping they'll do? What, what would you like to see for changes for Orion and Aegis? You know, those are a couple they talked about. And what do you think about these new mechs and weapons and all that kind of stuff? So, yeah, love to hear your thoughts on it as well. And we'll see you out there on the battlefield.